What is up? I'm Marcel and welcome back to Modern Filmmaker. In this DaVinci Resolve 18 tutorial, we're going to be color grading some footage from the Blackmagic Pocket 6K Pro. I'm going to show you how I set up my projects for Blackmagic RAW, as well as show you some killer techniques for really pushing the image and getting an insane look. <laughs> So I'm in the media pool of DaVinci Resolve 18 and I'm just going to drag in a clip that we're going to use for this tutorial and it's a clip of my buddy John Reddick on a runway. Uh, he actually had his girlfriend fly in on a private jet to a small airport where he was kneeling on the runway in front of the plane with the ring. How baller is that? Who does that? Anyway, super sick. So let me just go through here and find the parts of the clip that we want to use. I'm going to go from about here and press I and then I'll drag this cursor down, go to about here and press O for an out point. Then I'll come over to the edit tab and I will click on this clip. I could just drag in the whole clip with the audio, but we don't need the audio. So I'm just going to double click on that and then this little film icon here, I can drag this in to just bring in the footage itself. And if I play this back for you guys, you can see it is a little shaky. Uh, my gimbal skills were struggling that day. It was super cold super cold and I had no gloves because you know how hard it is to work a gimbal and a touchscreen with gloves it's a nightmare um, but all we have to do is stabilize that so I'm going to come down here to stabilization and with this on perspective I'm going to click stabilize and I highly suggest you go through the different types of stabilization modes the translation similarity and perspective because depending on the clip that you have um, you know you may get kind of weird warps or wobbles from some of the stabilization modes and you may need to go through those just to find which one works the best for the footage that you're working on perspective works Works great on this but a lot of the time I find myself using translation just in case you're wondering uh, so if I play this back now it is super smooth buttery look at that he's like looking up waiting for the plane to come in oh so romantic all right so from here when it comes to coloring there's a million ways to skin a cat there's a million ways to color grade some people might correct the shot and then throw a LUT on and then do some look grading after that some people might do the LUT first and then do everything after some people might do everything before and then do the LUT there's a million different ways for me I like to do this in color management to start off on a good point that's where I like to start when color grading black magic raw unless there's a certain kind of look that I'm going for that I know I'll need to use a different technique for but for this I'm going to come up to File, Project Settings, come down to Color Management, and then where it says DaVinci YRGB, I'm going to go down to YRGB Color Managed, and then click off of Automatic Color Management, and then in Color Processing Mode, I'm going to click this drop down menu, go to Custom, and then we have a whole lot of options here, which I'll go over really quick. In the Input Color Space, it's asking you what kind of color space are you giving DaVinci Resolve. Now we're giving it Black Magic Raw, which is a raw Black Magic color space. Uh, it'd be Gen 5. Um, so if we come up here to DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate, you can do that for all Blackmagic RAW, whether it's Gen 4 or Gen 5, uh, whatever camera it comes from. Now in Timeline Color Space, it's asking us what do we want our timeline color space to be in, as in what do we want our working color space to be in, what do we want a color grade in. And I actually want a color grade in Rec. 709, I want the output to be Rec. 709, so all this can stay the same. It would only change if you want to do HDR, but for me, all this is fine. So I'll click Save, and you'll see that it automatically transforms the footage from just raw, flat, uh, black magic raw to this nice uh, saturated now a little bit more contrasty image and we can really see what's going on love that so i'm just going to scrub through here to find a good hero frame i like that one that's pretty good and then i'll go to the color tab and i'll close the gallery because uh, we won't need that and you might have your timeline open you can close that you might have your clips open you can close that this will give you more space to work in if I drag this down, the first thing I'm going to do is work on the contrast a little bit. You may think I'm going to add contrast to it, but I'm actually going to take away some contrast. Let me label this node contrast. And then in the curves, I'm going to go to the highs of the curves and pull these down a bit. And I really want to push these clouds in the image here in a second. And that's why I'm pulling this down because I know that I want to manipulate some of the highlights and really bring them out. So I want a little bit more space up top to do that with. So I'm going to pull this down to about here. That looks good. And then I'll come down to the lows in the curves and pull these up just a little bit, not too much. I just want to make sure I'm getting all the information in the shirt. I want the shadows of a shirt to, to still have a little information and detail in there because uh, I know we'll be pulling those shadows down as well. And then from here, I'll hit Alt-S to make a new node. And I'm going to add a LUT with this node. Uh, I'm going to add a look, a film look. And so if I right-click this, and go to LUTs and then come down to film look. 
I'm going to go to Kodak 2383D60, and boom. You can already see that this has really transformed the image. The reason I'm using this look is to give us a little bit more blues in the shadows. Um, you can see even in his pants, it's a little bit of a blue hue here in the shadows. His shirt is still black, which is great, and the grass kind of has a slightly bluer tint as well as it's a little desaturated. And then the highlights in the skies now have this nice warm look, almost making it seem like it was closer to golden hour. This was actually about 11 a.m. in just an overcast day. So there really wasn't much uh, to look at in the sky and this really helps. So using film looks is a nice quick way to kind of nudge your colors in a more film-esque way, in a more stylized way. That way you don't have to go into the log wheels and the primaries wheels and kind of you know mess with that and do it yourself. Uh, so I'll go ahead and label this node LUT. And then from here, I'm going to make a series of parallel nodes. Parallel nodes, if you don't know, they just run in unison with each other. So normal nodes like this LUT node is reading this contrast node. Now this node will be reading the LUT node. Now in parallel nodes, all these nodes will actually read off of this LUT node and they won't really necessarily affect each other. Now they will affect the image, but they won't affect each other. I hope that makes sense to you. But anyway, if I click Alt P, Alt P, uh, those are our parallel nodes we're gonna use today. And what I'm gonna do in this first one is bring out the highs of the clouds. There just wasn't much information in the clouds. Like I said, it was overcast. So it was kind of just like a blanket over the sky that wasn't really that dynamic, but we can actually make it more dynamic by bringing out those clouds. In the second parallel node, I'm gonna make a lens blur, kind of like an anamorphic or vintage lens blur that kind of has this a nice kind of warping blur around the ends in the distance. And then at the bottom one, I'm going to just make a vignette to kind of make him pop a little bit more. Uh, but first, before that, this LUT seems a little strong. And so I'm gonna to go to the key of this LUT node and then pull this gain down. The gain in the key output is pretty much the strength of that node, almost like the opacity of a layer. So I'm just gonna bring this down to maybe the mid 700s, maybe around here will work just fine. I like that. We still get the look, but it doesn't seem as overdone. Um, so let's go to this first one. I'll label this sky and we will, let me reconnect that, whoops. And we will go to the qualifier. We'll hit the highlight button in the top left and then raise the luminance until we see just the portion of the sky that we want. Uh, that looks about right. And I'll soften this. That looks good. Maybe soften a little bit more. Maybe move the low up slightly more. Love it. And then I'll hit off the highlight button. And from there, we'll go to our primaries wheels and the gain and raise the gain quite a bit. Boom. You see that just little extra bit of dynamics we're getting in the sky? Off, on, off, on. That's so nice because there really wasn't clouds this prominent that day you know you guys all know how overcast is it's great to shoot in because you have a nice soft box over the whole sky but as far as how the sky looks it usually looks pretty boring so that's a really nice way to kind of just bring out the little bit of information that's there to make it seem a little bit more magical then this next one we're going to add that blur like i mentioned so let me say depth uh, field and from here i'm going to add a depth map because that's a really easy way in this instance to kind of rotoscope him out instead of having to rotoscope them or mask them and then track it or magic mask. Uh, we can actually use the depth uh, map to get a really nice uh, effect that'll help us blur this background. So if I go to effects and type in depth map, I can drag this on to our node. And then here in a second, you'll see it actually show us what's being qualified. So right now it's got us pretty close. Uh, what I really want is I want him and I want a little bit of the road because if we think about, if I deselect this, if we think about a lens blur, a lens blur gets more and more blurry as the background goes on. So we don't want super blur right here and back here. We really just want the blur to kind of gradually get stronger as it gets back to these trees and this tree line. So with that in mind, let me turn this back on and I'll go to adjustment map levels and I'll bring down the near limit quite a bit. Yeah, that looks good. And then I'll bring down the far limit or bring up the far limit. Maybe to about here. That looks fine. Then I'll come down to post processing. I'll turn this on and you see that it gives us a lot of information. Now it's really kind of seeing what's in the shot and, and giving us that, that depth map 
uh, to work with, which is really cool and really convenient depending on what you're doing. So with post filter, I'm gonna turn this all the way down because I really don't need the extra detail to be honest. And from here, I'm kind of just gonna leave it here. I may bump the expand up just a little to make sure that we don't blur any of his, him or his jacket. I just wanna get that background. And then we can click off of depth map preview. And then the last thing we'll need to do is click on invert. And then with that node selected, we can press Alt S to make a new node right next to it and then connect this blue square to this blue triangle. And then this node will use this last node as a mask. Therefore, now we can put our blur on this second node and it'll have him masked out. So if I move the Gaussian blur over, you can see that that doesn't really look real. That doesn't look like a real lens blur. That looks more like an iPhone portrait effect. Uh, so let's get rid of that. And even if you use lens blur, I try to use lens blur all the time and that just doesn't look real. It doesn't look scientifically like depth of field at all to me. It look again looks like the iPhone portrait effect. Uh, but I like to use the radial blur, especially to get that anamorphic vintage film uh, look where you got to have this warping um, and this distortion on the edges and in the background. And then from here, I'm just going to move our smooth strength down because it's a little too much right now. It looks a little crazy, which could be cool. This is a really cool effect to use with music videos or in, in, in film S projects when you have a stressful situation going on or you really want to make it seem like the talent is in distress. Uh, that can be really cool. But let's turn this down. Uh, just to where we kind of notice it, but it's not super crazy. That's good. That looks good to me, maybe a little more. And it really makes him pop even more as well, which I love. And if I turn that off, back on, I love it. It's one of those things that you notice when you turn it off and back on, but if you show this to somebody for the first time, they're going to be like, man, that's, that's a pretty magical blur you got back there. And then we can even fine tune our depth map because I want to get a little bit more of this road. So if I pull this near limit down a little bit more, that should help. And then we can click off depth map preview and that looks nice. You know, we're not getting as much warping down here. We're getting a lot back here and that is scientifically in reality how lenses work. Uh, so that's awesome. And then this last one, like I said, we're gonna add a vignette. So I'm gonna click on the masks and make a circular mask. I'm gonna make this pretty big and feather this out quite a bit with the softening, maybe widen it, maybe make it a little bigger, and invert it, and then come over to our curves, I'll make a dot towards the bottom in the shadows and pull this down. I love that. That's nice, it's just that little thing really helps him pop even more. I don't know what it is, but I love it. Very nice. And we're only gonna do two more serial nodes. This is actually a pretty simple technique once you have it all down. Uh, so if I hit Alt S, we're just going to add a little bit more saturation. Probably about close to 60, maybe 57. Yeah, around there. Boom. And then Alt S for one more node. And I'm going to add a little bit of glow that's going to really transform this image because it looks good right now. It looks good. I'm not mad at this image at all. I, I feel like this looks pretty decent. Um, but we can add just a little bit more magic that, that really feels like um, it was a high production value shoot where we had lighting because we didn't. It was just natural light. Uh, but where we had lighting and we had a much more stage shot. Uh, so let's go to the effects and then we'll come down to glow, drag this onto our last node. And then we can come down to composite type, go to soft light, and then we'll pull the shine threshold down just a little, about to there. And that looks sick. He pops more. It's given us some more darkness uh, here in the shadowy area, uh, and it's really brought up kind of the highs. It's kind of almost blown out the highs. We still have the information there, but now the light wraps around his face a little bit more, which is awesome. It really, and you can see it on his chest too. It almost looks like we have a soft box over here out of the frame. If I turn that off, it's like, what? We thought this looked good, but then you turn that on and it's like, now that looks right. That looks magical. And that's the great thing about Black Magic Raw is you can push it. And the great thing about DaVinci Resolve is you have all these tools where you can really push the image to get something spectacular and magical. If you guys learned something in this video, if you liked the video, go down there and click the like button for me. And if you didn't like the video, maybe just click the like button anyway. 
And of course, leave all your comments, questions, and concerns down below in the comment section. And feel free to subscribe if you like videos on Vinci Resolve. And as always, I'm Marcel. This has been the Modern Filmmaker. I'll see y'all next time. Peace.